how, how, how is that gonna work? What's going on YouTube? I got another great one for you today. We're taking a look at another docking station. This is the Mini Soap Roo 16 in one triple display docking station. This has got a ton of great features. It's also aimed at the high end of the market. People who really need high quality, high speed professional desktop class ports. So we're gonna take a look at it. Hit the subscribe button and click the bell so you don't miss as we cover all things tech. I'm Chris Grant Jr. It's the Granny Geek Show. Okay, so very much like the iVan key that we reviewed previously, uh, this thing is plastic on the top, plastic on the bottom with rubber feet, so it's not gonna slide around on your desk. It is a thick boy, it's, it's, it's quite a bit thicker than the iVan key, but that's okay, because it's all about horsepower and performance when you're talking about professional docking stations. Now, this has 10 gigabits each for a USB-A port, and they used orange instead of like the blue, although I still think it's USB-3. You've got two 10 gigabit USB-C C ports on the front, as well as what they're claiming is another 10 gigabit USB-C port with 30 watts of charge power. Um, of course, this gets its power independently, so it's not drawing power from your MacBook. It can charge your MacBook and then offer an additional 30 watts of power. So this thing is going to be a gas guzzler in terms of power, but it will give you everything you need theoretically. Now, one thing that's interesting is uh, this adds up to 50 gigabits here. If my math is correct, you've got four 10 gigabit, two flavors of USB-C and two flavors of USB-A, and then an additional 10 gigabit USB-C. Uh, this runs on only one USB-C port, Thunderbolt speeds, which maxes out at 40 gigabits. So we will not be able to run all five of these ports simultaneously, certainly not, and still have room for the USB-A port here for keyboard and mouse, and you can put other little small, low power, low speed USB devices. You've got your SD card reader here, as well as your micro SD card. You've got your power button, and what I will say, I'm just being honest, is I, I haven't liked having the power port on the front. Uh, I would prefer it on the top because you wouldn't get accidental clicks. Sometimes when I'm plugging something in and you know, you go to grab it, if I'm not careful, I'll grab it on the end and I will turn the thing off. And, and it's been, thankfully it hasn't been during any kind of crucial operations. And that's something that both the Mini Soparu as well as the Ivan key that we reviewed uh, both have is those power ports there. And of course, to finish off the front here, we've got your headphone jack as well as mic input. Um, now on the back, this is where things get really exciting. Yes, we have our power. Yes, we have our USB-C port that goes directly to the computer, um, but we've got two different flavors of display outputs. Of course, we have our HDMI, but we've also got DisplayPort and nothing says professional video like DisplayPort. Good old locking connection very high quality. Now it will run display one and two at up to 4K 60, okay? But then it goes crazy with its display alt mode. It can run either HDMI or display port at 8K 30. I don't know how it's, listen, if I've even got three USB devices running at 10 gigabits, right? You've got 20 gigabits left for everything else. If I've got a display running at 4K 60 and then I try to plug in just one other display at 8K 30, how, 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 how is that gonna work? I don't know, but I'm definitely excited to find out. Now, finishing off the back here, we've got our gigabit ethernet. Now that's plenty fast for anything you need. It's not the highest we've seen on these kind of devices, but you're not gonna have any speed problems with any wired internet that you're gonna need. Also on the side, of course, you've got your Kensington lock. These things are not cheap. This comes in at 250, so you're gonna wanna lock it down with that Kensington lock. But of course, this is aimed for the higher end of the market, the people who really uh, need multiple ports, desktop class and desktop speed ports. So it really does justify the cost in the in these cases all right so this device boasts a good game there's only one thing left to do we we've got to test this thing out and see what it can do okay so right here we've got your standard issue samsung t7 ssd we've got a 40 gigabit cable and we're going to plug it right in to the mini soap uh, and we're going to plug it into the usb c port that it has that offers 10 gigabits of speed so we can see that the ssd is turning on indicated by that blue light there on the SSD. And let's see what kind of speeds we're getting here. We'll start the test. Wow, getting. Wow, so you're talking pretty close to full speed there. It started at a thousand, it seems to be dropping. Oh my, it ended in 6661. But you're also getting read speeds 
that seem to be holding steadily look like they're dropping a little bit but over 600 on the read as well but the power of this device is not in just plugging in one thing right we're gonna max out all these ports and see what it can do all right so here we have another samsung t7 ssd and another 40 gigabit cable we're gonna go ahead and plug that in and it's also powered one again indicated by the blue blinking light this one's a little bit slower it looks like it's dipping 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 finishes the test in the high 400s for the right speed and then according to the reads the low 600s for the read speed so still respectable speeds and again we're running two different ssds at this point so now we're going to take this nvme ssd that is in an ssd enclosure here and we're going to uh, connect it via usb a all right, we've plugged it in and this too is connecting via the blue light indicator there. Okay, so it does appear after plugging in three SSDs, high speed SSDs with two monitors at high resolution running at 60 Hertz, uh, it did kind of spaz out a little bit and the displays went off. So it does look like there's some soft limitations there in terms of just how many high speed SSDs you can run at the same time while using this to run your displays, but there's an easy workaround. I mean, the MacBook also has an HDMI port and it has another USB-C that's freed up by even using this dock. So you can plug in another display as well and run that fine, no issues. Let's get a look at that SD card reader. We're gonna plug in this 256 gigabyte SD card from Lexar. It does indeed show up here, no problem. We're gonna open Blackmagic Speed Test. We're going to select the SD card. We're going to open that up because remember, it's not just about being able to connect things. When you're working in a professional workflow, it's also about the speed of those connections. So here we go. We're testing the SD card and seeing what, oh, oh wow. Yeah. So it started off at about 500. Looks like it's settling in the 200 range, maybe 150 range. Seems to be dropping as we're going. It is showing right there that the throughput is capable of uh, you know, very, very high speeds. They're just not sustained speeds. Also with SD cards, you do get some issue with sustained speeds, like its peak speeds can be very high, but what it's actually settling around here for the write speed is about 94 megabits per second. And we're seeing about 90 here on the read speed as well, which is probably closer aligned with its average speed versus its peak speed. But again, the docking station itself shows that it's capable of running an SD card at up to 500 megabits per second, which is what we saw when it first started out. All right, folks, so when it comes to the mini Soparu, 16 in one USB-C docking station, I gotta say, I'm really impressed with it. I'm impressed with the build quality. Of course, it's right up to par with everything else in its class. Uh, it's not afraid to draw 140 watts of power uh, to you know power itself, to power your MacBook, and even to deliver 30 watts of charge to an external device. Um, it's not afraid to do a whole bunch of ports, even though, as we suspected, it can't run all of these things simultaneously. But you know, at lower speeds, you probably could get away with plugging in more devices here, knowing that you have a little bit of headroom. But obviously, if you're doing any kind of mission critical thing where you've got multiple drives, like for instance, editing a short film where you've got multiple terabytes on multiple uh, NVMe SSD drives plugged directly in here, you could get some ejections. So that's a little scary, but of course, it's a limitation of the MacBook Pro itself and current standards for transfer speeds at 40 gigabits per second for Thunderbolt 3 and 4. Um, and it is just something that this device makes you want to push and makes you want to try because it does have just so many ports rated at such high speeds. But you got to know your device, obviously. Otherwise, you, you may get some scary ejections. Okay, so would I recommend this is the question. And my answer is absolutely yes, but for a specific type of user. Listen, if you're just plugging in like USB keyboards and low power, low speed USB devices, uh, this is not for you. It is absolute overkill. What this is for is for our higher end power users, people who need DisplayPort, people who need 8K, people who need uh, 4K60, people who need the gigabit ethernet, uh, people who need, you know, uh, 10, 20, 30 gigabits of, of throughput, of speed for transferring large files, whether that's video editing, photo editing, 
what have you. Um, that's who this is aimed for. Uh, so definitely it's a high quality device and I think it'll get the job done for anybody looking to do that. But of course, let me know what you think of the device down in the description below. I will leave, of course, a link to grab one of these if you want. It'll help out the channel as well. And if you like the Granite Geek Show, if you like the way this show is made, I'm actually giving away my secrets in terms of the process I go through to make videos just like this. So I'm going to put a link to that as well down in the description. It's absolutely free, so no worries there. Um, but what you can't do is like, subscribe, and click the bell so that you don't miss as we cover all things tech. I'm Chris Grant Jr. It's the Granite Geek Show.